Oh, we finished up with the dilations. There's just so much with a dilation. Um, and today, we're, or last class, we looked at the center of dilation being the origin, and today we're going to put it somewhere else. So at the top of the page, it says to recall that a dilation is not a rigid motion. It's the only transformation that's not a rigid motion. And that's because distance is not preserved. It is a transformation in which the original figure and its image are similar. Okay, we keep the shape the same, but we're changing the size. So in order to find the scale factor k, we take the image and divide it by the pre-image. Okay, so again, this is up top with the prime symbols that's noting the image divided by the length of the side of the pre-image. Okay, uh, remember, the center of dilation of a point and its image are collinear. So we can use slope to help us graph the image. Okay. So the example, the center of dilation at the origin. So this is what we did last class. So let's know a, the origin. And if you have a ruler, okay, grab your ruler. And you can connect, remember, the center of dilation from a point through its image. So center of dilation A to A prime, center of dilation B to B prime, center of dilation C to C prime. They're all collinear, OK? So now when we go to this example, where well, the center is right here, OK? So we'll use, I guess, I wasn't on pen, but that's OK. Center of dilation connect from B to B prime. You can see they're collinear. Center of dilation from A to A prime. And then center of dilation from C to C prime. Okay, all on the same line. And last, the center's here. So center from A through A prime. Center from B to B prime. And then from the center through C and C prime. Okay, they're all collinear. And to determine the image, or our scale factor, we can just count the slope. How far did we move from here to here? If it's a dilation of two, we double it, triple it, and then that'll allow us to move from here to here. Okay? So let's take a look at the first example. This is graph the image of segment DE under a dilation of two, and then verify that it indeed is twice the length. So um, one of the things you can do uh, with this one especially is because it said if it just has a dilation of 2, we know it has to be about 0, 0. Because unless it tells you what that center of uh, dilation is, it's always going to be about the origin. So let's note the coordinates for D. D is 2, 1. And E is 4, 4. So if we're going to dilate by 2, it means we're going to multiply the coordinates by 2, d prime becomes 4, 2, and e prime becomes 8, 8. So let's graph 4, 2, one, two, three. and e prime, which is 8, 8. So 10, 9, 8, 10, 9, 8. And let's connect. And note, too, that these segments are also parallel, OK? So there is um, graph, the image. So we just graphed. And then we need to verify that it is, uh, indeed, twice the length. So I'm going to I'm gonna draw a line here. Define length, distance of DE and then the distance of D prime, E prime. And I'm not going to use the distance formula, but rather create right triangles and use Pythagorean theorem. So this is a 3 by 2 triangle. I'm creating a right triangle here. This triangle is 4 by 6. So in doing that, uh, length DE is the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared which is the square root of 13. Therefore, I can avoid that positive and negative. 
and d prime e prime is the square root of 4 squared plus 6 squared. And 16 plus 36 is the square root of 52. If I reduce that, largest perfect square factor is 4, 4 times 13, so there's 2 radical 13. So I just verified that d prime e prime is twice. Okay? Next page. Graph t prime h prime after dilation of 2 with the center of dilation. Okay, so this time they tell us the center of dilation is t. So t is not going to move. So state the coordinates of endpoints t prime and h prime. Okay? So one of the things we can do is we know that um, the center, a point in its image, are collinear. So what you can do is start by drawing a line segment that goes through the center, a point in its image. So I'm going to move H. Okay. I don't know if I have that perfect. And then we need to count. So another thing, too, is if the center of dilation is T, T prime, right, is going to be right here. It's the center, right? It doesn't move. So H, so we're going to use slope to count how we got there, or you can use your compass. I'll first look at slope. So this is up 2 over 5. That's a dilation of 1, which keeps the figure congruent. So up 2 over 5 is right here at H prime. Okay. Graph T prime, so I'm going to put an endpoint here, sketch the segment, okay, so there's T prime, H prime, and then state the coordinates. So remember T does not move, so T prime is negative 3, 4, and now H prime is 7, 8. Another thing you could do, as I said, is use your compass, and because you can measure length, okay, let's see how long first of all, th is. So here's th, which is whoops, um, a dilation of 1. It's congruent. So there's now twice its length. We move the compass out to a that end point. We make the arc for twice as long. So we can see that th, or t prime, h prime, is twice the length of th because our scale factor is 2. There are multiple ways to do these. Graph a prime b prime after a dilation of 1 fourth, the center of dilation being negative 3, negative 5. So let's plot that first. So left, 1, 2, 3, down, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm going to put the center. And I am going to draw the lines, okay? So from the center through A, okay? Center through B, all right? And our dilation is 1 fourth. So that tells me, whoops, that tells me the points need to be closer to the center. So let's look at how much we move, or how far we move to get to A. So from, well actually that's right, and then we can actually see the points. So from negative 3, so this x value, or actually let's go to the y value first, let's go up. From a negative 5 to a 3, that's up 8, right? And then from a negative 3 to a 7, that's over 4. We need to go one fourth that distance. So a fourth of eight is two, and then a fourth of four is one. So now we're going to go up two over one this time. Up two over one. Here's a prime. It's as easy as that. Now the other side. Let me grab a different color. Let's grab red. All right, we're going on the x-axis from a negative 3 to a 9, so that's over 12. And then we're going from a negative 5 to a 7. That's also up 12. 
taking a quarter of those movements. But this time we're just going to go over three, up three. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Here's B prime. So back to the question, it said graph A prime, B prime, the segment. So take your ruler and connect and state the coordinates of A prime and B prime. So A prime is negative 4, negative 3, and B prime is 0, negative 2. All right, number 4. Under dilation where the center, all right, so the center of dilation is the origin. So let's start by drawing a segment. We'll do it in light blue. Oh, not light blue, because that's in light blue. We'll do it in pink. So from the center of origin from A through A prime, center of origin from B to B prime, and then center of origin, center is the origin, so the center of uh, dilation from C to C prime. All right, find the scale factor K. Well, all we need to do since the center is at the origin, so let's take coordinates of A, and they go to A prime. So A is 2, 1. And A prime is 6, 3. So they were tripled. OK? So our scale factor, K, is 3. All right. Number 5. Graph y equals negative 1 third x plus 2. So we start at 2 on the y-axis, and then we go down 1 over 3. We're up 1 left. OK, we're going to graph that line. So let's connect. Draw the arrows and label. All right, write and graph the equation of the image um, of that line under a dilation of two. So we're going to dilate a line, okay? And from so we take a look at the center of dilation. Now we could use multiplication for all of our points because the center of dilation um, is the origin, but I'm going to show you the way to do it by counting. So if we count from the origin to that point, we go up to. So it's image, I mean twice as far from the origin, because this is a dilation of one since it's the same. Go up another two, this is a dilation of two. Go up three, it'd be a dilation of three, so on and so forth. So we need to move two points in order to draw the new line. So to go to this point, we go right, three, up, one. So go right, one, two, three, up, one. Here's the, again, this is a dilation of one, dilation of two. We have our two points, we're done. So write and graph the equation of the line, or of the equation of the image. So we have, First of all, let's draw the line, and then we'll write its equation. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let's do that graph in blue. So I'm going to draw it there. I'm going to try to go over top to extend it in this direction. OK. So I just graphed it. One of the things I want to remind you is that any pre-image and image in a dilation are parallel. We have our y-intercept here of 1, 2, 3, 4. And since it's parallel, we have the same slope of negative 1 third. So b, the equation, is y equals negative 1 third x plus 4. OK? Number 6, we're going to graph um, y equals 2 thirds x plus five-thirds, okay? So because this equation, 
doesn't have integer values for the slope or intercept, do we want to type it into the calculator and take two points uh, from that line or just one? Then we can use the slope of up to over three to graph the rest. So if we open up the graphing calculator, and let's go to, I'm going to reset this calculator, and let's type it in. So 2 thirds x plus 5 thirds. And look at the table. And da, 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 da. Or the point 2, 3, and 5, 5. So we can just use the 2, 3, OK? So we start with the point. So a point on that line is 2, 3. So right 2, 1, 2, 3. We can use the slope of up 2 over 3 to graph the rest. So up 2, 1, 2, 3, up 2, 1, 2, 3. Or from here down to left, 1, 2, 3, down 2, 1, 2, 3, down 2, 1, 2, 3, down 1, 2, 3. So let's connect. All right, we're going, to do a, we're going to also do a dilation of 2. This time, the center of dilation is 2, negative 2. So I'm going to move that point. So or I'm going to plot that point. 1, 2, down, 2. So here's our center now. So the way we do this again is we pick two points to move. So I'm going to pick this point and this point. And we count the number of squares from the center to that point. So we've got one. Actually, I don't want to draw the line this time. So counting up, one, two, three, four, five. So it's a dilation of one. Up, one, two, three, four, five. Here's our new point, dilation of two. To get to this one, we go left, one, two, three, up, one, two, three. Again, that's a dilation of one. So now I'm going to go left, one, two, three, up, one, two, three. And there's the movement of that point. So now I'm going to, um, I know it should be parallel, so I can use the slope of up 1, 2 over 1, 2, 3, up 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, down 2, 1, 2, 3, down 2, 1, 2, 3, to help me graph a nice straight line. I like the counting from the center, it makes it really easy. All right, so I know it's got to have the same slope of 2 thirds. So my slope is 2 thirds. And let's say it's through point. We have to pick a point that it goes through. Ba, ba, ba. Let's pick this point right here, which is over 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So through point 2, 8. And I like to use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So it's going to be, let me slide this up, y minus our y value, so y minus 8 equals now our slope. It's parallel, so it has to be the same. So 2 thirds x minus 2. So let's distribute, then we can add the 8. So we have 2 thirds x minus 2 thirds times 2 is 4 thirds, and I'm going to add 8 in terms of a third. So that would be 24 over 3, which is 8. Um, and I forgot the x. So to finish, y equals 2 thirds x, combining like terms, negative 4 plus 20, or 24 is 20 over 3. All right, now for the fun part. Our last two are um, constructions. So we're going to do number seven first, obviously, which says to use a compass and straight edge to construct triangle ABC, or given, using the tools and given triangle ABC below, construct the image of a dilation of three. Now, since we don't have much room, we're actually going to change this to a dilation of two. Okay? So the first thing we do, and I'm going to have to zoom out for this one so you can see it better. We're going to take our straight edge, and you're going to draw a segment from the center of rotation 
So we can do those in red. From the center of rotation through each of the points. So here you go through A. Here's through B. And last, C. Okay? Now you take your compass, because you have to construct it, and let's move C first. So measure from E to C. Okay? Let's use green. And here is a dilation. Or right, just purple. Look up your mind, pen. So here's a dilation of one, so twice as long. Dilation of two. Now let's measure from E to B. So one, two, and then from A one two. All right. Get rid of the compass. Let's note our point. So this is A prime, B prime, and C prime. Now let's connect those for our triangle. A prime, C prime, C prime, B prime, B prime, A prime. And there you have it. And the last one is another dilation. Um, this one a dilation of two with the center of dilation being E. So we're going to take the same thing we did before, take your ruler, and we're going to draw a segment from the center. So this time it's E all the way through A. I'll change colors. Uh, this time E all the way through C. I'm going to stay on the page. And then E through B. Now twice as long, so we got our compass, and we'll do that in green. So if we measure from E to C using the tool, so E to C, I guess it's purple again. It's just tricking me. And then E to C, double. Measure from E to B. So once, twice. From E to A, and then we can draw a triangle and be done. Last day of notes for the. Nope, we have one more day of notes. Day five notes. Right? Yeah, day five notes. We finish with other transformations of lines and do some sequence of transformations. So there we go. So we're almost done for the year. All right, so let's know our points. We'll do that in green. So here's A prime, B prime, C prime. And let's draw the triangle now, which I'll do in green. So A prime, C prime, whoops, went up just a little. A prime, C prime, C prime, B prime, and then B prime, A prime. And that is it. One thing just to note um, before you go is that when we're doing pink, that AB is parallel to A prime, B prime. Um, BC parallel to B prime, C prime. And then AC and A prime, C prime are actually um, coinciding, right? Or one lands right over top of the other, so they would have the same slope. And that's it. We are done.